Welcome to Real Chemistry. I'm Dr. Morris, and today we're going to be talking about Lewis structures, which are basically just a way to draw molecules, and we represent electrons that are shared in these molecules with sticks, we call bonds. Those are shared electrons, in this case between the carbon and chlorine. And then we represent electrons that aren't participating in bonding, but are valence electrons as lone pairs. And that's what those double dots are there that are all over the place. You'll notice that if you look at all these atoms, they all have eight electrons around them. So take chlorine, for example, here has eight electrons. And then similarly, if we look at carbon has eight electrons and two of them are shared. Those shared electrons are the bond that we draw over here. So we want to be able to draw these structures to get an idea of how all the atoms are connected. Our chemical formula gives us information about what atoms are there. Our Lewis structure tells us how they're connected. And if you want to be able to draw Lewis structures, a really important thing to do is to start with knowing how many bonds each atom wants. We can do that from the periodic table. So it turns out that carbon wants four bonds, just like we saw in the Lewis structure above. And that's because it has four valence electrons, and so it needs four more to get eight electrons for an octet. Nitrogen has five valence electrons, so it needs three more to get an octet, so it needs to form three bonds. And then oxygen two, and fluorine one. Lastly, uh, boron, which is a little difficult to understand in terms of the valence electrons, wants three bonds, and it turns out beryllium wants two, and hydrogen wants one. So it makes a nice little pattern. One, two, three, four, three, two, one. So that's sort of easy to remember, and it corresponds, remember, to the number of valence electrons needed to make an octet in most cases. Hydrogen's a little bit of an exception, right? Hydrogen just needs two electrons to have a complete outer shell in the 1s orbital, and so it only wants one electron, and hydrogen, by the way, will never have any lone pairs, as we'll see in a second. All right, let's go ahead and try to draw a Lewis structure. So here, we're asked to draw the Lewis structure for NH3, which is ammonium, and the first step listed down below is that we want to determine the number of bonds needed for each atom. Well, if we remember from just a second ago, nitrogen needs three, and hydrogen needs one. Step two is we're just going to try to guess the structure. By the way, what we've drawn so far are called single bonds. Sometimes you use double bonds and sometimes you use triple bonds. You don't need them for this molecule, but we'll use some in a second. Now, nitrogen needs three, hydrogen needs one. As a good rule of thumb, put the atom that needs more bonds in the center. So we're going to put nitrogen down. And then, since each hydrogen needs one bond, we're just going to connect a hydrogen here and another hydrogen and another hydrogen. Now, we're not done yet. We have drawn three hydrogens and one nitrogen, and they all have the right number of bonds, and that's a good start. But what we need to do is we need to fill in lone pairs to get an octet. Every atom wants an octet, uh, with some exceptions. Some important ones are boron wants six electrons, and hydrogen turns out to want just two electrons. So each of our hydrogen, because it's participating in a bond, already has two electrons, and we don't need to add any lone pairs to it. You should never see hydrogen with lone pairs on it. Nitrogen, however, if we count, has one bond, one bond, two bonds, three bonds for six total electrons. Remember, each bond is two electrons. So if we want to give it an octet, we need to tack on a single lone pair. And that turns out to be the correct Lewis structure for ammonia. Now, a nice way to check this is to remember that nitrogen, right, it has five valence electrons. Hydrogen has one valence electron, and there's three hydrogens. So if we multiply our hydrogen times three, we get three, and we add five to that, we get eight total electrons. So we should see in our structure eight total electrons, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight total electrons uh, in the valence means that we have the correct number of total electrons, and our structure meets all of the bond requirements, and we've added our lone pairs, so we have our Lewis structure. Now, sometimes you might get your Lewis structure wrong when you draw the first time. These are relatively easy molecules. But if you get it wrong, and say the bonds don't work out, or you get the wrong number of valence electrons, just try again. Keep guessing different ways to connect the atoms. Let's take a look at another example. This guy is CO2. Remember that carbon still wants four bonds, and oxygen wants two. So we're going to start with our carbon, and we know that oxygen is going to be bound to it. And since carbon needs so many bonds, it's a good bet that both oxygens are going to be bound to it. But notice that is not complete. Let me draw that bond a little shorter. That's not complete, right? Because my carbon only has two bonds and my oxygen only have one bond each. And this is where we can use those double bonds. Since each oxygen wants two bonds, we can go ahead and double bond things to our carbon. So now oxygen has the right number of bonds. 
at two each. And carbon has the right number of bonds at four. And now we can go on to step three, which is to fill in the lone pairs. Well, if we think about our carbon, it has one, two, three, four bonds around it for eight total electrons. So carbon already has a octet. It doesn't have a lone pair on it. On the other hand, oxygen just has one, two bonds, which gives it four electrons. It needs two more. So it's going to need two octets. So we'll add, I'm sorry, not two octets, but two lone pairs. So we'll add two lone pairs on each one. There we go. That turns out to be the Lewis structure for carbon dioxide. Let's check once again that we have the right number of valence electrons. Carbon has four. There's just one of those. Oxygen has six valence electrons. There's two of those. So we get four and 12 valence electrons. We add those together and we get 16. Notice now when we count, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we have the right number of valence electrons. We have the right number of bonds. This is the correct Lewis structure for our carbon dioxide. All right, one more example. Now we're asked to draw the Lewis structure for CNH. And we're going to once again start by adding or noting how many bonds each one wants. Four for carbon, three for nitrogen, one for hydrogen. Again, we're going to start carbon in the center. And we know that nitrogen is going to be bound to it because that's the only way nitrogen could even come close to getting three bonds. And then we'll note that in order for nitrogen to have three bonds and carbon to have four bonds, I'm going to have to tack on a hydrogen here. Right? That gives more bonds to carbon, and carbon wants as many bonds as possible. And I'm still not done yet because carbon only has two bonds and nitrogen only has one. How can I give nitrogen three and carbon four? By adding two lines here. That's a triple bond. That represents six electrons shared between them. So now I've guessed the structure. All the bonds are right. And once again, I'm at filling in the lone pairs. Hydrogen wants two electrons. It's got one bond. It's got us two electrons. Carbon wants eight electrons. It has four bonds, giving us eight electrons. So we're good. Now, lastly, nitrogen needs eight electrons, and right now it has three bonds, and so we need to add a lone pair to give it eight total electrons. Now, we'll check the number of valence electrons. Nitrogen, remember, has five valence electrons times one. Carbon has four valence electrons, and hydrogen has one. So when we add those valence electrons up, we get 10. And notice we have one, two from the hydrogen bond plus six from the carbon nitrogen bond. That's a total of eight. And then nine, 10 from this lone pair. So that's 10 total valence electrons around our CNH. So we've used triple bonds and double bonds and single bonds and lone pairs to always facilitate giving the atoms exactly how many bonds they want. And in the end, giving them an octet. And we double check at the end, making sure the valence number of electrons are correct. So those are three relatively simple examples of Lewis structures. There's more complicated Lewis structures that you can draw, and some of them can get pretty difficult. But that's the basics. So if you have any questions, please ask them below. And thanks again for watching. As always, please subscribe or comment if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.